Allah wants to encourage encourage people to do things by tell them if you do this I will reward you by this al hasana to be ashri amtalia inshallah please come forward we're going to start in a minute his brother is loading me with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Amma ba'd Fa inna asdaq al hadithi kitabu Allahi azza wa jal Wa khayr al hadyu hadyu Sayyidina Muhammadin Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa sharra al umuri muhdatatuha Wa kulla muhdatatin bid'ah Wa kulla bid'atin dalala Wa kulla dalalatin fin nar Allahumma ajirna min al nar اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما يقرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعود بك من النار وما يقرب إليها من قول أو عمل اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان رمضان my brothers and sisters الله سبحانه وتعالى he says on the آيات when we recite the آيات كتب عليكم الصيام Allah prescribe on you Allah made an obligation on you of the month of Ramadan and he keeps going ayyam and ma'dudat numbers of days and then he says in order to have taqwa in order to get closer to Allah and then he keeps saying فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا and we will talk about this insha'Allah and whomever is sick ayyam and ma'dudat do some other days if you are sick you are unable to do the fasting do another days Allah is talking in the Quran literally the ulama they say مَنْ أَرَاضَ أَنْ and you can Allah. If you want that Allah is talking to you, read the Quran. Women are rather and you can lima Allah, fell you sunni. Well, it just jumps in my mind. Amazing. If you want that Allah to talk to you, pick up the Quran and read. Well, when I read Surah Al Baqarah about Sayyam, all oh, you who believe, Ya Ayuhaladina, Allah is talking to his human being, to his servants. And then in the ayat, La'allakum tattaqoon, he's giving, he's telling you why I am asking you to fast. In order to have piety, in order to be uh, a good moral person, you, you become a better person. And then he keeps going, Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, the best month, and so on. الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ The month that I reveal my word, the word of Allah is the Quran. The best words ever is the word of Allah. And he picked the month of Ramadan, the best month to reveal his word. Just to show you the value. And he's asking us to value Ramadan. Allah is telling you to value this month and to get closer unto me. And what he did? In the end of Surah, he says, After he's asking you to fast and to do Qiyam and to do Salat and to read the Quran, Allah, he says in the ayah, Wallahi, he says two words, it's amazing. He says, Wallahu yuridu an ankum. Allah wants to make it easy on you. In Ramadan, you're gonna get ease. You're gonna find Allah says this: "Wa yuridu Allahu an yuhafifa ankum." In Ramadan, how? Because if you do not obey Allah Subhanahu wa Taala during the year, and you die, you go to the hellfire. So what tachfif? That's heavy. Hellfire is so great that you can ever imagine. Ramadan will save you from hellfire. So that's tachfif. That you read Allah and you khafifa ankum. And then in the end of the surah, still talking about, about Ramadan, he says, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ In order to, for you to be grateful, thankful. So Ramadan is coming, we say, Ya Allah, I want Ramadan. And then when he's finished, you say, thank you, Ya Allah. Be grateful that Allah give me the ability to pass the school of the spiritual school of, of Ramadan. We need it. No sheikh is bigger than Ramadan. No, no human being is bigger than Ramadan. Everyone needs Ramadan. Even Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he says, "I need Ramadan." Can you believe this? Yaqul al-Sahaba. They say Rasulullah is the. Can a look in Arabic is amazing. He says, "Can a Rasulullah ajwad al-nas?" You know, tajweed means the word tajweed means is beautiful. To beautify the Quran, it means tajweed. To jawweed the shayt. To make it beautiful. That's why we are ordered to beautify the Quran with our voices. It means tajweed. So the same word that was used for tajweed, the Sahaba they say Rasulullah was was ajwad al-nas. He's not. He's, they don't tell me what his tajweed. His voice was beautiful. 
You know, there is a, a hadith of the, that his voice, the Sahaba, they come from far away to the Masjid al Nabawi to hear the voice of the Prophet. He has a beautiful voice and a sound voice. And I, one day I, will, I found one, one guy, I did a research how the Prophet used to read the Quran. And one Shaykh, he says, I trace and I did a lot of research. And, it's, and, and he recited, and it's, it's amazing. One day I want to do it for you. You know, it's, it's astonishing. But he said this is the closest, because it's 1400 years ago. So they trace, trace to find out. But the, the hadith says, كان رسول الله أجود الناس. He was the best and the best quality of a human being. أجود الناس means physically, mentally, and spiritually. He was the best. The word أجود means the best quality. The Sahaba they said, وَكَانَ أَجْوَدَ مَا يَكُونْ فِي رَمَضَانِ And he, ex he was extremely أَجْوَد, beautiful in Ramadan. SubhanAllah, so Ramadan is not just the food, it's not just the drink, it's not just the shahwa to stay away from food and drink, but actually Ramadan is a, a, a spiritual, moral character, discipline. It's a discipline, SubhanAllah. You want to remove those ugliness on the human being from you. You want to become the best human being ever. Even the Prophet Sallallahu he says in, uh, in, in, in uh, he says, Hadith Sahih, he says, He says, If you do not leave indecency, and fahsha, and munkar, and bad deeds, and, 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 uh, and all of those the demoralized and the, the, bad, the bad behavior. He says, Allah has no need for you to leave just the food and the drink. When you slaughter a cow, Allah says in, uh, in many times, لَن يَنَالَ اللَّهُ ذِمَاؤُهَا وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ Allah does not need the blood and the flesh of the animal that you do. Allah does not need just the food. Wallahi, this is amazing, powerful concept of Ramadan. That's another concept. Not just the, we are going to stay from the food and the drink and the sexual intercourse and we're good. No. Allah says, I don't need this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has malaika, they worship Allah. He says, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم. The malaika, they don't eat. They are created from light, from spiritual, spiritual people. They, they are the most beautiful people ever, creation of Allah. We cannot say people, but they're creation of Allah. لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمْرَهُمْ Well, Allah says, if you, if, uh, if you count how many malaika you cannot. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا And no one knows the junood and the army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except him. And he said, they, they don't eat, they don't drink. So Allah is not in need for you to do this. It's for us to, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by leaving the food and the drink and as well as the bad behavior. Uh, Abdullah ibn Jabir, he says a beautiful saying. It just comes in my mind as well. He says, إِذَا sumta When you fast, فَلْيَصُمْ سَمْعُكَ وَبَصَرُكَ وَلِسَانُكَ عَنِ الْكَذِبِ وَالْحَرَامِ what a beautiful saying. He says, if you fast, let your eyesight fast. Let your ear fast. Let your, from, let your tongue, tongue fast. And then he says, from al-kadhib, from lying and from anything that is haram. So the true fasting in reality is the fast, is the spiritual fast. Is, this is the, the, more than the food, of course, the food and the drink as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create Ramadan, did not demand Ramadan for us in order to make us suffer. Actually, we benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the same surah of the, of the Siyam, he says, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ To fast is better for you. Today, there is clinics, clinics of the people that they cure one of the, 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 the deepest diseases by fasting. They call it water fast. Do doctors now, scientists are commanding it, their patient to fast. Subhanallah already did this for us so many. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, in order to be better. If you only know. So fasting is a spiritual, it's a spiritual closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Al-Urtubi, let's begin by the, the word Ramadan, because I want to question, what is the, I'm going to pose the question and answer, because the, the topic today, Ramadan Mubarak, with questions and answer. So what is the meaning of Ramadan? 
But before I get you the meaning of Ramadan, what is the meaning of Allah? Today I was reading through my uh, index. I have probably a lot of those. I said I'll, I pick one and I, and I remember, wallahi, I was almost going to cry. The meaning of Allah, linguistic, subhanAllah, you need to know sometimes the language of the word and it gives you power because the, the, that word, it's not just like that, it's word. So the word Allah comes from Aliha, from the word Alif, Lam, Al Ha, Aliha. So that's the word. The word Allah comes from this word Aliha. What is Aliha in the Arabic language? The Arab, the Arab, they used to say Aliha Al Fasil. Al Fasil is the baby of the camel. The baby of the camel. That baby, what they do? They call him Al Fasil. Al Fasil. So it's a small camel. Now let's speak just like that so you understand. The, the people at that time, the desert, they remove the mother from the baby. The Fasil. They remove the baby. So they put him alone and they put the mother. The baby, when, he be, he, when, he's, when he's far away from his mother, when he starts making a sound like a baby, like a crying sound. Mm. The Arab, the Arab that they say, the desert, the people who Allah revealed the Quran with their language, what they say, Aliha al Fasil. Al Aliha al Fasil. The Fasil, Aliha. It means he needs his mother so bad. So from there comes the word Allah, Alladhi, the one that everyone needs him and cries for him, and he doesn't need anybody. So the word Aliha from that little camel, the baby, that cries and needs the mother, the word, the human being needs Allah like that little baby of camel that needs Allah. You cannot separate yourself from this. You, that's why you see there is a suicide rate so high on those sophisticated countries that they are disconnected with the spiritual connection with, their, with the Creator. So they, they, they die, they commit suicide. Because they are, they are there like this, like the baby. You cannot let the baby far away from its, its mother. It will cry until... So, so we as Muslims, we, the more we get closer, the more we find that mercy and that rahmah. So the word Allah comes from this word Aliha. It means he needs Allah. We need Allah. We cry for that thing. al ilah alladhi the people, they need him. That word Aliha, it means you need. That's it a need. So subhanAllah, the word Allah come. The other meaning of Allah, it means for, uh, of Aliha, is الَّذِي تَحْتَارُ فِيهِ الْعُقُولِ No one knows the power of Allah other than Allah. No one has seen Allah. And all of the malaika, they worship Allah. All of human beings, the prophets, but no one yet has seen Allah. So it means, it's a wonder. Wallahu jameel, and he's so beautiful. And in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show himself to the believers. The ulama, they say, the best ni'mah, the best blessings in Jannah on the day of judgment, it's not the food and the drink, rather than the seeing Allah on the Jannah. And one of the worst punishment of the people of the hellfire on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in Surah Al-Mutaffifin. He says, كَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ عَنْ رَبِّهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ Nay, on the day of judgment, the disbeliever will not be allowed to look at Allah, to see Allah. What a punishment, the ulama, they say, this is the greatest punishment on the people of the hellfire. They couldn't see Allah. Allah will never allow himself to be seen by this people who disobey him. And only the people who worship Allah in the dunya, in ghayb, out of this unseen. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without seeing Him. And that's the value of your iman. That's why, the, that's why Allah will reward you with Jannah. So that's what. Now, let's go to the word Ramadan. Ramadan comes from the Ramad. Ramda. Ramda means extreme heat. And uh, Imam Al-Qurtubi, he says, سُمِّيَ رَمَضَانِ بِرَمَضَانِ لِأَنَّهُ يَحْرِقُ الدُّنُوبِ He says Ramadan was named because of Ramadan, Ramadha. There is another hadith of the Prophet when he mentioned this word of Ramadha, that the Ramad means, Ramadha means the extreme heat. He says, صَلَاةُ الْأَوَّابِينَ حِينَ تَرْمَضُ الْأَلْفِصَالِ 
Again, Fisal, again, the, the baby camel, they cannot walk on the heat of the desert. He says, the Salat of Al Awabin, those who return to Allah, Salat al Duha. You know, Salat al Duha is supposed to be after Shuruq. After Shuruq, he says, is the best time for it, then the best reward of this Salat al Duha, if you delay it when the sun is extremely hot. You get more reward for Salat No one pray at that time. So the, if you pray at that time, you get more reward. Because we're busy. We're working. We're down. You know, I pray Shorok, for example. But what time I pray? I pray Fajr. I sit down 15, 20 minutes. Okay, time for Shorok. You pray Shorok and you're gone. You, get, you go to work. But the, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Salatul Awabin. The Awabin is the highest level of those who they have a connection with Allah. He says at like 10 o'clock or maybe 11 o'clock. When the, the heat is Ramza, Ramza means Tarmadu al Fisal, it means the Fisal, the, the baby camel, they cannot put their feet on the sand. So this is, comes the word Ramadan. They cannot put your feet in, in Ramadan, you cannot put your feet anywhere, you cannot put your hand. It's like, it's like Subhanallah, look at the word Ramadan, Ramza, Ramadan, the heat, and it, it will burn the, the sand, and you cannot do even the halal. In Ramadan, certain things that they are halal for you, you will, are going to abstain from it with no problem. With no problem and you are happy. Billions of Muslims, you know, they are going to fast Ramadan without actually any problem on halal, on the daytime, on food and drink and relationship. Is it halal? You know what that means? Allah is telling you something. Oh, ya abdi, oh my servants. If you can stay for halal, you see, you, I, I make you prove to yourself that you are capable of staying away even from halal. Today, people, they cannot stay from haram. You actually stayed away from halal thing, food and drink and your wife. It's halal for you, but I ask you to stop and you did. Why after Ramadan, you go and touch the haram? Why after Ramadan you go and do this and this? Why and so on? So Allah is proving to us as a human being and as in general, as a Muslim and in particular, that we as human being, we are capable of worshiping Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not ask too much. In, Allah, in, in the Quran constantly, constantly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps saying, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Ramadan. Ramadan means to burn your sin because Ramadan burns those sin that's why it's called Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this month in the Quran Shahru Ramadan is not someone else name Ramadan Ramadan but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned Ramadan Siyam Sawm what is Siyam in Arabic is to stay away from is to hold back is to, that is in the linguist not the the religious meaning. The religious meaning is to stay away from food and drink and sexual intercourse from the from uh, from sunrise dawn from the Khaytul Abyad, the light until the sunset. This is the period of time, and we already know this. This is imsak, which is imsak, which is psalm, the 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 spiritual meaning of it. But in the language meaning is to stay away from. Like uh, Maryam alayhi salam, inni nadartu lil rahmani sawman, falan ukallima al yawma in siyaf, inni nadartu lil lay sawman. I am giving a promise to Allah that I'm not going to speak with no one. Sawman. Sawm, a sawmu anil kalam, that people, that they can drink, but she's sa'ima fasting on food, uh, or, or maybe sa'ima anil kalam. She cannot speak. She, you can say, I am the, the Arab, they used to say, sa'mati, sa'mati al khayl. When she stopped walking, they say that the, the horses are fasting when they stop walking. So when the word fast, and a sa'im, it means I am refraining from something. In Islam, you are refraining from food and drink and so on and so on. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to do the, the question now. I have question and then I answer. I mention this hadith every year about the, the, the Prophet sallallahu He says, when Ramadan come, all the doors of Jannah, they are open. And not even one is closed. All the doors of the hellfire, which is hadith sahih, in multiple hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I shut down the doors of the hellfire. And I open all the doors of Jannah. It's an unseen word from Allah. We know because we believe on it. If Allah said it, it's the truth. 
Now, and then in the hadith, it says, And the shayateen and the devil are ch ch chain. So now the question arises, if the shayateen are chain, why still Muslims and non-Muslims, they still do haram? Where is this word that shayateen are chain? Somebody may ask you this question. The, the answer is, num three, three answers right there. Number one, the hadith, if you look in other hadith, you found that the Prophet Sallallahu he says, this taghleel, this chain, that the shayateen are chained, he said the meaning of it. He said they cannot do what they used to do in other than Ramadan. In Ramadan, they are constricted. They're still there. But they cannot do exactly what they use. So there is a form of shayateen that they are reframing from attacking the human being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy, his ultimate mercy has actually stopped the shaytan because many people sometimes they do something haram. Ya akhi shaytan did and did. Ya akhi shaytan, which is true in one way, but again you still blame. You cannot just keep saying shaytan. Well, you fail the test. You have to ask Allah, you have to do your power, you have to do mujahada, you have to do and so on. So number one answer to why still human beings do the haram, it means that the shayateen, they still there, but they are not as powerful as other than Ramadan. In Ramadan, they become weak. They are chained, they are weak, but they still do a little bit. That's number one answer. The second thing, which is a powerful uh, ulama, they mention this. They say, shaytan, he knows. Ramadan is coming. So he works so hard on, he, on us. Every day of the year, he knows in Ramadan he cannot do so much. He's going to keep misguiding the people. You know the job of shaitan? Allah says, Inna shaitan lakum mubin. Verily the shaitan is an open enemy. Allah, the one who created us, and we believe in Allah that there is an entity that calls shaitan, that it's in there. And he's misguiding us. We, we believe on it. We have to say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. We have to seek Allah to protect us from this devil, from this shaitan that he sees. And Allah says, they see you, you cannot see them. Innahum yarawnakum min haytu la tarawnahum. Subhanallah, they see you, you cannot see them. So they can do a lot to humans. So what the other answer to the why the shayateen still do this, the shaytan works the whole year. When he, Ramadan, he says, Salaamu Alaikum. And you still do the same thing. You become custom. You become custom to the sin. And this is crazy. Wallah, it's very, very powerful. Don't let the shaytan make you custom to the sin. Make tawbah. That's why in the Quran, I don't want to get, I want to get to some questions and about Ramadan, but that's why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ Verily, tawbah and repentance, it's only upon those who actually, they commit sin and they repent, listen, مِنْ قَرِيبٍ from nearby. He makes something haram. Today you have to make tawbah. The more you delay and you keep doing it, doing it, it becomes custom and you don't even see it. If somebody comes after two, three, five, ten, fifteen years, he says, hey brother, you do this haram. He says, what do you mean? Are you crazy? What do you say? No, 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 it's fine. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm good. You don't see it. And that's the job of shaitan. He will make us do the sin at the beginning and it will take time to do that sin. Sometimes you don't want to do it. It's hard, but he's going to keep begging you only one time. Only one time. Look at this. It's only one time. Look at the pornography. Only one time. Look at this. Go to the bar. Only that one. Just to test and see. Allah knows that you are a good person. Shaitan is speaking like this. And subhanallah, many, many. Until you do that thing. When you do, he comes to you. He says, okay, so what happened? You was thinking some sa'iqa or some uh, punishment will come. Nothing come, you're good. Do it again. And do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Until you do it for five, six, or maybe the whole year. Ramadan come, you still do it. The, then well, that's why people, that's the answer of somebody who will say, why still people do haram or disobey Allah in Ramadan while the hadith says the shayateen are chained. Yes. So that's uh, number two. Number three, Number three answer to the same question is, it's not only the shaitan is an enemy of human being. Yes, he is the biggest human being. One in, and the Quran is telling us, the Quran tells us the dunya, this life. 
The Quran told us the bad company, it's your enemy. You have a bad company, brother, let's go do this, let's go do this. He may pull you. A sahibu sahib, the friend, they will take you to the hellfire. If you have a bad company, and many hadith that talks about the bad company. The other enemy of this is your own self, because we are human. We have this, this nukta. You know the, the Prophet ﷺ, two times, that Jibreel ﷺ comes and he opened his chest, and he removed one spot, blood spot, you know, hadith sahih. And the Prophet ﷺ, later on, he opened his chest. It's a surgery, by the way. Doctors, you are here, study this. It's a seerah. It's a sahih seerah. It's a sound seerah of the Prophet that he said, I was open, chest open, physically by Jibreel ﷺ, and he removed that blood spot, and he washes my heart with zamzam. With Zamzam, because the Prophet, now Allah already know the Prophet is a good human being. He picked him to be a Prophet. But I'm going to remove something. That, that anything that lives there, I remove it. And he was the best human, uh, even more. And Allah will do the same thing to you in a different form. He doesn't have to send the Jibreel to open your chest, but he will guide you. In الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا زِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى For those who accept my guidance, I will increase them in guidance. But in the form, but you should accept the guidance. Accept Allah, accept the Quran, accept the Sunnah, accept Islam, feel good about it. I love Allah, I love this. Once you do this and you accept it, Allah will guide you more. Those who are guided, we will increase them in guidance. But if you, Nafar, and you stay away and you feel shame and you don't want this, Allah will distance you more. If you don't want, Allah will distance you. Get out of here. You don't want me, I don't want you. This is how it works. So the Prophet was in, a diff in a, one of the highest level of form of that increase of guidance. He sent Jibreel literally to open the chest of, of Muhammad sallallahu and make him the best ever. So we human beings have this enemy of us. We have. You f that's why we fight with each other. We have grouch, we have enmity, we have this and this and this. So even though if Ramadan, everything is chained, the shayatin is chained, but we still have to fight with our own self. So that's another... Uh, One of the craziest questions that I have, why do Muslims don't fast in one day and they break the fast? Is it true or not? What is, and the Shaykh answered in, in a beautiful way. It's okay, there is different opinions here and here. If we want that all, the, tomorrow will be a problem. Tomorrow we're gonna do, do the moon sighting, and some people, they go with the calculation. You know, hisab, there's a calculation of, uh, of the calculation of the, the, the astronomical, you know, calculation. The ulama, they say, not even one sheikh from 700 years ago and more that they agreed upon this calculation. All those calculations, uh, this is not my, my opinion. Ibn Taymiyyah, I don't want to take too much of your time. He says, لا نعتد بها. Imam al-Nawawi, Riyadh al-Salihin. Go look at the Riyadh al-Nawawi. He says, that qiyas is fasid, is nullified. The, to, to go and, and start the, the, fast, the fasting and the breaking the fasting by the calculation. And the ulama, they say, why? Because Islam is, is based on ease, is not made based on science. Islam, Allah is talking to the people, farmers. They don't know nothing. Allah talking about an old lady that she is living alone in, in whatever, Ethiopia or Morocco or Algeria. Allah says, And it's, look at the word. Fast when you see it, eyesight with the eyesight. If all the Muslims, if, if they don't, we no problem, we don't fight with nobody. And now we just answer in the question of the guy who said, why, how can we all the Muslims fast in one day and break the fast in one day, all of them in this. And it's a become beautiful. Wallahi, to be honest with you, if we do that, it will be so much power. Wallahi, you will scare the enemy of Islam. How this guy, this way, subhanAllah, you know? It's like the Salat, we stand in Mecca, we are together, we are... So, number one, we have to get rid of the calculation. Because that's... Because we will never get anybody to agree. Because we already have Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam... They says this is nullified. So we cannot... Al-Ijma, which is the, the, the anonymous of all the, the old scholars and... And they says the calculation is not... Even the Prophet ﷺ, he says, we are Ummah. This Islam is not based on writing and... Calculation. He says the word. We do not count. Can you go home on this uh, bottle? 
Is it haram? That's you only make it difficult. Islam is not based on this. You know, in fiqh, there is a certain amount of najasa could be fall on a water. If the water does not change the smell and the taste, you make wudu with it. Although there is something. A, a man came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I just jumped in my mind, alhamdulillah. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, they have some oil or something and some rot falls on it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, remove what around it and use the rest. Can you, now if you bring a microscope stuff, you may find najasa, you may find poison, you might find small thing, you may find, well, if you use the microscopic and science, you may find, but the Prophet says, remove and eat, because our religion is based on that ease. You read Allah and you khafifa ankum. Allah wants to make it easy on you. You read Allah and yatuba alaykum. Allah wants to make to repent on you. So this is the basic of this. There is many a hadith that talks about Islam, it's so easy. Tayammum. If you don't find water, you make tayammum. If you don't find this, you make that. And when you travel in, you make taqseer of salat, you shorten the prayer. Islam is based on takhfif. Don't be afraid of the religion. The religion is based on ease. We have a rule on fiqh. We have the biggest, the, the, five, the five biggest rules of fiqh, principles of, of Islam. It's one of them is, just one of them is al mashaqqatu tajlibu taysir The difficulty will bring ease. When something will become difficult on, on anybody, it becomes easy. If you cannot fast, then you, 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 you make it another day. If you cannot fast permanently, you just pay a meal for one person. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ If you cannot fast, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا out of because you are sick, if you have sickness and you ask a Muslim doctor, it's, it's in there. If somebody is sick and he cannot perform the fasting, you cannot just wake up in the morning and do, because sometimes, yeah, we get small sickness. I have a headache, that's normal. There is, there is a certain sickness, there is two type of sickness that the ulama, they will talk about. The first sickness, it could be a permanent, that somebody is permanently sick. It's a, the ruling is different. There is a temporarily sickness. It's a sickness that it's sick now, sick, but it's just temporarily. If you are permanently sick, you cannot fast. And two Muslim doctors, they acknowledge this. They say, if you fast, you, you, can you can die. If you fast, it becomes haram for you to fast. Oh, by the way. If a doctor, Muslim two doctor, they ask you, and they, they tell you, if you fast, you may die, or maybe you harm yourself. It becomes haram for you, forbidden. And allow, you're not allowed to fast at that moment. What you need to do, now we will see. The doctor will tell you, you may be cured in a day or two, or maybe in a year. Then you have to only, if you did, you have to wait until you get better and you make up that day. But if the doctor said that you will never be better, you always gonna get sick. What do you do? You only pay a meal for one person. 30 days, you pay 30 meals like 10 bucks somebody who can eat and drink you give him a meal for one day you can pay it the ulama they say you can pay it the 30 days at the beginning or you can wait until ramadan is finished and this is when it's this there is seven things that will nullify your salat your uh, sayyam seven the ulama they mention this in fiqh i will mention this number one al jima intercourse with uh, somebody someone's wife is if somebody is married wallahi some ulama they say people ask them they say i can what to be honest with you a sahabi sahaba is a human being came to rasulullah jima means intercourse with your own wife in the day of ramadan and they're not travelers you see there is a qualification there if both man and woman they are travelers they can do jima if they want to, but because they are travel, they are not. But they live, they are sitting, they are local, and they are within the category of fasting, and they need to be fasting, and they did it. Then you know what's the problem? Look at this. And a sahabi came to Rasulullah. He said, "Ya Rasulullah, ihtaraqt." Sahabi came to Rasulullah. Two of them actually. One of them in this hadith in Sahih al Bukhari. He says, "O Messenger of Allah, I burned." I get bur I burn. Ihtaraqtu, it means I burn. And then another hadith says, Riwayah, he says, I destroyed myself. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Malak, what's going on? The hadith, by the way, says, what wrong with you? What the heck? What wrong? He says, Waqa'tu ala ahli fi nahari Ramadan. I had intercourse with my wife in the day of Ramadan. Faqala Rasulullah. In another riwayah, he says, you did this? He says, Naam, Ya Rasulullah, I did. 
He asked him to the second time, you did it? He says, yes, I did. Subhanallah, he didn't control himself. He did it. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, عَلَيْكَ بِعِتْقِ رَقَبَ This is the... This is the value of one day, if you did. That's why I mentioned this. This is the value of one day. He says, you have to free one slave. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I don't have the money to free a slave. Then he says, you have to fast two months consecutively. Like after one, one day after one day. If you break one day for no reason, you have to start from, the, from one. You see, it's very, this is the rules of Allah. You, you, then he says, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, ma waqa'tu ala ahli illa annani da'if. I'm weak. I cannot fast 60 days. I cannot even fast now. The, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if you, and the, you have to be honest with yourself. Nobody's going to judge you other than Allah. And the Prophet knows. He says, I cannot, you know, fast the 60 days. He says, you have to pay the poor, the meal, 60 poor. You have to feed 60 poor. He says, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi ma f I, I, can, I don't have the money to feed these 60 people. Sahaba, they was poor. And then the Prophet Sallallahu he says, sit down. Hadith says like, he says, sit down. So he's sitting down, the Prophet Sallallahu talking to people, and somebody brought some sadaqah and some dates as a charity to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So the Prophet Sallallahu he, he picked the date and he says, uh, what is the guy who says, I got burned, I got destroyed? He says, Ana ya Rasulullah. He says, come here. He says, here you go this date and go give it to the poor. He says, Ya Rasulullah, what poor more than me? I am the poorest person in Medina. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, take it for you and your family. Well, Sahaba, they say the Prophet ﷺ was big smile on his face until we saw his molar teeth. He smiled to them. And this is the, again, you see how the religion is easy? As long as the man was honestly, you know, talking to the Prophet, if he lied, Allah will expose the lie. But that's the, the first thing that will nullify the fact. You know how, what to do, number one, if somebody did it, number one, he needs to, to stop. If somebody did it, the ulama, they say, this is how it works. This is how it works. If somebody break the fast without any reason. Number one, you, you should not keep eating. If somebody decided to fight with somebody, he says, okay, now I'm going to drink the water in, in, the, in the month of Ramadan on the daytime. Number one, he needs to make tawbah. This is how it works. You need to repent to Allah. Number two, you need to refrain. Finished all, you cannot eat until Maghrib. You need to make tawbah and you stop eating. You don't say, okay, I made a mistake, so I will ask her repentance, so let me now have barbecue. No. You're not allowed to eat. You see that how it works? You make tawbah. If you did anything wrong that, uh, that nullify your fasting, but, and then you realize that, okay, I did a mistake. You stop. You do not actually keep eating. You stop reframing, make tawbah, stop from eating, and then do the, the steps that's necessary. We still have a little time? So, so we talk about the marid, khuruj al dam The blood. If you have blood, you're not allowed Islamically to do hijama on, on this. Because there is a hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, al-hajimu al-mahjum, the cupping, you know, to remove the blood from the... There was some ikhtilaf between ulama about uh, to do, and the ulama, they say, why this ikhtilaf? It depends on the person. The reason of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Aftar al-hajim wal-mahjum, both of them, the one who performed the cupping, the removing of the blood, and the one who, who, who actually give the blood, take the, he said, both of them, they nullify their fasting. Number one, because the, at that time, they used to do it with mamal. They suck the blood to do hijama. The hijama is a medical thing for some of you who doesn't know. We did talk about it before. And it's amazing, you have to do it, but wait after Ramadan. So, so they used to do it with their mouth. Now we have technology, we have those copying, we have more sophisticated tools to do the hijama. So the, the one who performed the hijama, there, there's no way we can say he lost his fasting. So for sure. The, about the person who we take the blood out from him, the blood, you take a lot of blood from you, the bad blood, but still you get weak. I did hijama and then after the hijama, you just lay down. So what happened? It, you may lose, you may ask for water, you may, so the Prophet says stay away. 
And some ulama they say when the Prophet ﷺ, says Aftara, al hajim wal mahjum, both of them they broke their fast. It means both of them are going to break their fast. It's almost they are going to break. See, the Arabic also is technical here at this moment. Now another thing which I like. Man if you some people they ask. I eat in the middle of Ramadan, especially the young brother, those who just become Muslim. They may, they may wake up one day, just woke up there, and they went to the refrigerator in the middle day, in the day of Ramadan, and they drank or they eat something. You know what? The Prophet ﷺ, he says, it is, it's from Allah. It does not nullify your fasting. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, Man akala aw shariba nasiyan, faka, faka he says, not only that you, there is nothing on you, there is nothing on you, but you actually benefited. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, it is Allah who has made you, caused you to eat and drink. It happens to me long time ago. Wallahi, I feel, after I did it, I felt happy because I know the hadith. But it completely, I was forgotten. I completely, long time ago. I'm, I'm just saying, but when I, it happened to Abdullah ibn Umar, he says, somebody saw him. It's a sahabi. He was drinking like this out of forgetfulness. Remember the word, forget we're human. Insan comes from the word that forgot, forgotten. They forget a lot. Abdullah ibn Umar, he says somebody, the, he says he was drinking something, somebody remind him. He says, why are you reminding me? Allah is giving me food and drink. But the ulama, they say, you know, the fiqh comes later. When you see somebody doing, you have to remind him. And then when they remind you, you have to stop and spit out what you already and just in the mouth. What goes, it's from Allah. And there is nothing on you at that moment. Katrat al nadar which is amazing. Katrat al nadar al-aflam, watching movies. Watching, we're not talking about haram. But if it's haram, what does? Is it nullify your fasting? No, it does not nullify your fasting. But you know what? It will take the ajr of fast. The reward of fasting is gone. You did your day, but the day is empty of hasanat. Because the, 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 the purpose of uh, the wisdom of fasting is actually to prevent your eyesight and your ears. But now you give the, 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 the chance to your ears and to the eyes and to your tongue to say and to speak and to backbite. And you know, so the day is count that you fast on that day. Just fast. But inside the day, the day, the day is nothing. It's empty. You meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, Allah will not ask you why you didn't fast. But he said the, the, you didn't come up with nothing. So you go to school, but actually you didn't fill up the paper. It's empty. So that's why all of those nadar and the music and the, the thing that you listen, you have to stop. And Ibn al-Qayyim, he says the best, the best ajr, the best, the best of the, the fasters is the one who, who, dik, who does dhikr and fasting. The best of the one the, the, the who prays, like we all prayed Isha. The best one got so much reward, the one who remembered Allah and, and do dhikr and remember Allah and Salat. The best people of Hajj, the, the people who remember Allah and Hajj more. The best of any ibadah, when that ibadah got so much dhikr on it. On it. So, that, so the best per reward of fasting is the one who actually uh, Dikr and do remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're about to close. We have to say one thing for the sisters. There's many, you know, I have, but I know the time, uh, the, which is very dangerous. Many, many people don't know this. If the sister start, to tell this to your wives. Tell this to your wives. If the sister woke up in the morning pure, no menstruations, pure, and she began the fasting, five minutes, not even five minutes, one minute before Maghrib, she, she got her menstruation period, okay? She need it haram for her to stay fasting. Even that five minutes, she need to get the water and drink, alhamdulillah. And Allah will reward you. And you have to make up that day and another time. But you cannot keep fasting. Because a lot of sisters, they don't know this ruling. And they say, well, I fasted... Uh, 16 hours now I have menstruation because it's haram for the woman to fast on the menstruation on the menstruation or this so if you got it 10 minutes or an hour before sunset you have to pick up the water and eat and drink or at least with your intention to 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 be free because it's haram to fast on that it's like somebody it's haram for you to pray if you lost your wudu 
Even the Prophet ﷺ one time happened to him, what's wrong? Let the people talk. If you lose your wudu, you have to, you don't even say salamu alaikum. This is a good ruling. If you lost your wudu, you pass some, some, ear, some ear or something, you lost your wudu. Or you remember, I didn't make wudu. I am praying all the way, it's happened to me. We are human being. You have to leave the prayer. You don't be shy. If you are an imam, you have to pull somebody from the back. If I am here and I remember I didn't do wudu, I'm going to pull you. Pull you to lead the prayer, I'm going to go. One time the Prophet ﷺ was making salat. Even Rasulullah ﷺ. The, the, the iqamah came, he comes, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He leading the prayer and then he says, Um Kutu, stay, stay in your place. He went inside. Because the, the house of the Prophet was like the door, like from here to the door. He went inside and the Sahaba stayed still. Can you, well, I love this, uh, this fiqh, this ruling. He took the shower because he was in Janaba. He forgot. But he, you know what he said? He said, I don't forget. But Allah caused me from His mercy to forget so you can learn from me. You see what I'm saying? He went, took shower and came, the, the water still dripping on from his beard. He just washed him with ghusl Janaba. They say, what's wrong with you, you're a human being? So the same thing for the women. If they, they fast the whole day, one hour before sunset, she found out she's uh, menstruation, the blood. That's it, stop, and you will get the reward. The ulama says, Allah will not uh, waste your day that you fast. It will give you the reward. The reward, especially when you break your fast. It becomes mandatory. It becomes a must to break your fast. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم سلم لنا رمضان وتسلم منا رمضان وسلم لنا رمضان اللهم آمين والسلام عليك تيدخل تيدخل ويت <تصفيق> <تصفيق>